Hey, welcome. My name is Kelly Anderson. I have been waiting on you. Today, we are going to be talking about self-acceptance. That's right. You loving you for who you are because you are unique and we need to celebrate that. But the question is, how do you go about celebrating who you are when some days are better than others? I'm here. I'm showing up. I'm ready to work with you today and I hope that you are here to learn some things because we are going to get in it. Okay, so today we're talking about self-acceptance, but what exactly does that mean? Well, self-acceptance is recognizing your imperfections and accepting them for what they are. Rather than condemning yourself when you can't stop obsessing about yourself and what other people think about you, you can finally start focusing on what changes you need to make that will help you feel better. It might actually surprise you to know that self-acceptance doesn't happen automatically. Many people struggle just simply to accept themselves for who they are. Even when they feel pretty self-assured and feeling pretty good about their life in general, self-acceptance isn't about being self-indulgent or being selfish. It means you accept yourself for who you are, your abilities, your appearance and your personality regardless of your weaknesses accepting yourself involves realistically understanding yourself as a person and to do that you need to accept your inner qualities your strengths and your imperfections the things that maybe aren't quite as perfect as you'd like for them to be there are stages to self-acceptance and they're really much like the stages of grief. For example, in denial, you do your very best to ignore all the things you don't like about yourself. In the anger stage, you consider your shortcomings only. And maybe you're angry when others point your shortcomings out to you. The next stage is bargaining. You have a strong desire to change the things about yourself, but you're really not sure how to go about doing that. And if somebody else points out your flaws, you are quick to defend yourself and to say that they are completely wrong the next step is depression you're having a hard time feeling good about yourself and the last and final step is acceptance here you accept all the things that make you you your feelings your appearance your beliefs you start identifying things that you would like to improve upon here's where the fun begins you see self-acceptance doesn't mean you are complacent that you're content with being right where you are it's all about admitting your shortcomings and then moving forward so you can do some self-improvement of course accepting yourself is a good first step I'll never deny that because it allows you to focus on your good qualities. That's where you can start to feel better about yourself and begin developing your self-esteem. Self-acceptance is also about recognizing your mistakes and correcting them. It means being aware of your weaknesses so that you can learn how to overcome those weaknesses and all that comes from you being able to accept yourself for who you are and being honest with yourself about who you are. May you always keep your head held up high Pretty little thing You're a diamond in the rough Shining from within I can tell that you're tough So what steps can you take? to feel better and start accepting yourself. Well, it starts with your mindset. Honey, you've got to start treating yourself with some compassion. Before barreling out on this journey, many people find themselves in a cycle of berating themselves and wishing they were completely different. And that only adds stress. And it quite frankly does a lot of damage to your self-esteem. So instead of constantly comparing yourself to other people and trying to live up to their 
standards. Take the time to appreciate the qualities you already possess and be gentle with yourself for crying out loud when you don't get things completely right. <laughs> and choose some kind words to describe yourself. We're too hard on ourselves. We'll call ourselves stupid and crazy and all kinds of things every moment of the day. But try to avoid doing that. Avoid beating yourself up. Extend yourself some grace and the same kind of compassion and understanding that you give to somebody else. Use your mistakes to motivate you. This will give you more self-awareness and ultimately help you behave differently. Learning to love yourself and treat yourself with the same respect and kindness that you give your best friend is the greatest gift that you can give yourself. You're the only you you'll get. So start trying to give yourself some wins, some simple goals. So that way, when you achieve those goals, you'll start feeling better. So think of some things that you personally want to achieve and start loving yourself with and forgiving yourself when you make those small mistakes. Don't feel bad about them. There isn't a perfect person in this world. And when you do that, when you start accepting your imperfections without feeling bad about them, you become happier. Because when you accept who you are, it helps set the tone for your own self-improvement and your growth. Honey, life is a whole lot easier when you realize that you're special in your own right and you were uniquely created. So you're not supposed to be like anyone else. And last and most important thing is for you to start setting some boundaries. You gotta surround yourself with people who accept you for who you are, not what they think you should be. This is a journey and it will be a whole lot sweeter when you're supported by those who truly care about who you are just as you are. Here's my quote for you today. You are imperfectly perfect. There is beauty in self-acceptance. If you have scars and quirks, don't hide them. It tells the story of who you are. They're nothing more than visual representations of the struggles you've lived through, the knowledge that you have gained, and the unique gift that only you can give to the world. So be safe. Treat yourself kindly, and I will see you next Thursday.